Paris is known for its historical axis that runs across the city from the Louvre to the Arc de Triomphe and onwards to the Grand Arch at La Défense. However, I'm interested in another axis within the city, one that's not as easy to see, however, it has had a similar impact on our history. I've come to the Paris Observatory to learn about the Paris Meridian. A meridian is a line of longitude that runs from the North to South Pole, which forms a half circle around the planet and is just over 20,000 kilometres long. The term meridian comes from the Latin merides, meaning midday, and alludes to its use in defining one's position to the path of the sun. In fact, our abbreviations for AM and PM, when noting time, refers to the similarly named anti and post meridian. The usage of meridians grew from their support in mapping, especially at a world scale, where a prime meridian can be referenced to provide an indication of relative position. And in the early 17th century, Louis XIII and Cardinal Richelieu decided that the Ferro Meridian would be referenced as the prime meridian on maps here within France. The Ferro Meridian intersects El Hero of the Canary Islands and forms the westernmost point of the world map developed by Tomali in the second century, as it was then known to Greco-Roman civilization. More importantly, it was thought that the Ferro Meridian was exactly 20 degrees west of Paris, which would aid mapping within the city. Some 30 years later, and now under the rule of Louis XIV, the Paris Observatory was constructed. Founded in 1667, it is the world's oldest continually operating observatory. The building was orientated on the north-south axis, with this line forming the new Paris Meridian, that would become the prime meridian on maps within France and throughout areas of Europe, some maps referencing both the Ferro and French equivalents. The Paris Meridian would prove its worth not only to mapping, but also to Earth science and measurement in general. In understanding that a meridian is not only a line over a projected map, but is also an arc that follows the spherical surface of the Earth. Astronomers at the Paris Observatory were able to measure this arc, first notably by astronomer Jean Picard, who measured two points of known distance to formulate the angle of the arc over one degree, which he would then utilise to approximate the diameter of the Earth. This measurement of triangulation would subsequently grow from the Paris Meridian to mapping distances over the entire country, of which would later be refined at the observatory under the guidance of four generations of the Cassini family. Measurements in France traditionally utilised a unit known as toise for length, area and volume, which was historically based on the size of a particular iron bar. However, over time, the size of this bar and its replacement markers varied slightly in its overall length. The French Academy of Sciences decided that the standard unit of measurement should be based on the size of the Earth, and in 1799 looked to the measurements of the astronomers at the Paris Observatory to form the metric system, with one metre being equal to one ten millionth of the distance between the North Pole and the equator. As geodesic measurement around the world was developed and standardised, the metric system was soon adopted as the global standard. Although providing significant scientific discovery, the Paris Meridian was one of only many developed around the world, and it was quite common for other developed nations to have their own. Examples of historical prime meridians can be found running through the centres of Washington DC, Rio de Janeiro, Berlin and Kyoto, to name only a few. However, it was the Greenwich Prime Meridian at the Royal Observatory in London that would prove the most popular rival to the axis here in Paris, when in 1884, the International Meridian Conference selected Greenwich to become the Prime Meridian of the world. The decision was not at first accepted by those in France, where the Paris Meridian remained in official use on French maps until 1911, before finally conforming with the international standard in Greenwich. The Paris Meridian was formed as a theoretical line, but it can be traced in the physical world today. In 1994, the government commissioned a series of medallions designed by Dutch contemporary artist Jan de Betz. The project pays homage to French scientist Francois Arago, one of the pioneers in the measurement of the Meridian Arc and the formation of the metre. 135 bronze medallions bearing the name of Arago and North-South markers were placed along the line over the full extent of Paris each disc measuring 12 centimetres in diameter. Some markers were placed in significant locations, including at the observatory, in the Luxembourg Gardens, and also through the Louvre Museum. Over time, some medallions are now no longer, either being misplaced during roadworks or becoming a souvenir for an avid collector. 
The Paris Meridian gaining popularity in the Dan Brown novel The Da Vinci Code, where it was entitled The Rose Line. However, in reality, the line did not pass through the Paris Meridian at the same location. A later initiative in the year 2000 to promote a green meridian saw additional medallions placed along the line. Our historical use of prime meridians has since evolved. The Greenwich Meridian was superseded in 1984 and we now utilise universal coordinated time and GPS positioning to determine a position in time and space. However, it is the idea that a small bronze medallion underfoot can allow one to easily revisit the Paris Meridian and remind us of our scientific histories of how we had measured the world around us.